Good day ladies and gentlemen, this is Sara van Grenen, aka Mr. VG and welcome, welcome to another video on analytical geometry. Remember this is a video that is part of a series of videos where we are looking at reworking the Department of Basic Education 2021 paper and we are looking at specifically this second paper. So the paper that has all your analytical geometry, your trigonometry, your Euclidean geometry, and your statistics. This section on analytical geometry today is specifically focusing on circles. Focusing on all the wonderful, intricate little things that has to do with circle analytical geometry. So what I want you to do is take this question and try it yourself. Hit the pause button and see whether you can do it. Go for it. Now, when I look at this question, I'm first of all going to start by analyzing the question. So it says in the diagram, the circle centered at n, negative 1,3. So I know that in my equation of the circle, I've got a and I've got B, if they ask it of me. It passes through the point negative 1, negative 1. Now, here's a very important thing. Please, matriculants, do not just rush through your information. Because a lot of times there's small little breadcrumbs that kind of show us things that if we're not careful, we are going to completely forget what it actually means. Like A's and N's, X coordinates are the same. Which means that they are vertically above one another. Okay? That is very, 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 very important. Okay? This means that if I draw a tangent at A, it's going to be a flat tangent. It's going to be horizontal, and it's going to be y equal to negative 1. Where did I get that from? Well, that's the y value of a. Okay. I'm saying these things because my students tend to forget if you know what with circles, and they forget the small things that lead to good questions by the examiner. Next up, it says there... Um, that I've got a parallelogram, parallelogram B, C, D, E. But a very important thing is the next little bit which says B, E is parallel to the x-axis. Because if I look at the first statement I wrote down there in green, the gradient of C, D must be equal to the gradient of B, E. And if BE is parallel to the x-axis, it means the gradients are zero. And you are going to see some awesome things that happen when the gradients are zero. Oh my goodness. Okay. And it says that CD is a tangent to the circle. Now remember that the radius NC must now be perpendicular to the gradient of CD, which means that the X value of C is the same as the X value of D because they lie vertically above one another. That is crucial to understand because that means the X value of C is definitely negative one. The last little bit of information tells me that CD is six units. But if CD is 6 units, well, then BE is also 6 units because it is a parallelogram. Which means, further, taking it another step further, the X value of D is going to be 5, while the X value of E is going to be 2. Now, you might go and say, whoa, 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 so where did you get that? Well, I got that by simply going from C to D must be 6 units on a flat line. 
So in other words, if I take the x value at c and I add 6 units to it, I get d's x value. The same with from b to e. If I take the negative 4 and I add 6 units to it, I'm going to get e's x value, which means oh, the y values are also the same from b to e. Why is that? Because it's a flat line. So I have E's coordinates actually. <laughs> Without me actually looking at any of the questions. So let's actually go and answer the question. If I look at the actual question, it says there first of all, write down the length of the radius. Now the length of the radius, I'm going to look at going from N to A because they are vertically above one another which means the distance from N to A is 4 units. How did I get that so quickly? Well, remember the Y value at N is 3, while the Y value at A is negative 1. They're vertically above one another, so therefore the distance is 4. That's the radius. Now, if I look at 4.2, it says there, 4.2.1, they're looking for C's coordinates. First of all, remember that C is vertically above N. So, the X value is negative 1. But what is the Y value? Remember that the radius is 4. So, to go from N to C, I just go vertically up 4 units. So, in other words, 3 plus 4 is 7. Where does the 3 come from? Remember that's the X value or the y value of n, my apologies. So the y value plus 4, therefore, c is equal to negative 1, 7. Looking at the next question, question 4.2.2. I, If you look on the sketch, you will see that I've actually now written in the coordinates for c, negative 1, 7. The next question is coordinates of d. First of all, I'm going to move from C to D, and it's six units horizontally. That's important, those words, because then the Y values are going to remain the same. And the X value, remember my reasoning, it's six values to go from C to D, so negative one plus six, and therefore D's coordinates is five comma seven. Writing it on the sketch the whole time. Constantly, I write my things on the sketch. Now, 4.2.3 asks me for the area of triangle BCD. Again, I look at my options. I only have two options for a triangle. For the area of a triangle, I can either go, okay, and after I've drawn it separately, I can go and say, well, either I'm going to use a half B times, half base times perpendicular height, or I can use the area rule. But I don't have any angles, so I'm not going to look at area rule. I'm going to try and work with a half base times by height. So what is the base in this case? In this case, the base is actually CD, while the perpendicular height is the distance in the Y values, the difference in my Y values between C and B. So the length of, of that is 5, because I'm going from B to C is the difference between 2 and 7, so that is 5 units. While the length of CD is 6, they gave it to me. Therefore, I'm going to calculate that and the answer is 15 units squared. Not that difficult, but that's why I love to draw it separately before I try and attempt it myself by looking at a complicated sketch where there's already a lot of things on there. 
But let's look at the next question. Now, the next question is now of an interesting question because what they are saying, and please just excuse me, I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. The circle centered at N is reflected about the line Y equal to X. So if it's a reflection in the line Y equal to X, hmm, where does this come from? Think about this now, ladies and gentlemen. Think about this. That is an inverse operation. It's an inverse function. Oh my goodness. This is paper one stuff. Remember, if you listen to my videos when I do this in paper one, I, I warn you, they are going to ask paper one knowledge in paper two and paper two knowledge in paper one. Be warned. So if I take this and I do my inverse operation, it means that to go from N to M, I've got to swap my X and my Y coordinates. Then, the actual question is, determine the length of NM. So I'm just going to go to my distance formula, substitute it in, and get an answer of 4 root 2. I love to keep it in simpler third form, because it's like super accurate. It's super accurate. I'm not rounding off or anything. This is it. As simple and as easy as that. But life does not say simple. When I look at question 4.3.2, I need the rest of the information. The rest of the information says, that the two circles intersect at A and F. So if I look at the new sketch, I'm going to draw that line Y equal to X. Then I reflect my midpoint N and I get 3 comma negative 1. And I get that new circle with center M and it intersects the old circle, the original circle at A and F. Now, I know this is not on scale, but I'm drawing it just like this so you understand. Now, what they are asking you for is the midpoint between A and F, or the midpoint of AF. So that point there. Remember that that midpoint is going to lie on the line y equal to f because it is a reflection about the line y equal to x. Why is this important? Because if I connect those two midpoints, n, m, it's also going to go through some line, through that line y equal x. Remember, it's a reflection. And a reflection means that the line from N to M is perpendicular to that reflection line. That is how reflections work, is that we take this distance there and we reflect it there. That is what reflections do. So, if they are perpendicular, or if the line MN is perpendicular to AF, think about circle geometry. If I've got a circle, let me draw a circle for you here. If I have a circle, And I've got a chord. If I've got a line from the midpoint that is perpendicular to that chord, what do I know? I know that it has to bisect the line, which means it passes through that midpoint. 
So that point there is the midpoint of the chord. In other words, that little point is actually the midpoint and it lies on MN and AF. So therefore, let's not E, I don't want to use E again because E is actually used on the sketch. Let's just call it, uh, what can we call it? Let's call it P, X comma Y, lies on the line Y equal to X. So AF intersects MN. So AF, which has the equation Y equal to X because it's the line of reflection, but now I need the line of AF. But wait, okay, okay, okay. Let me backtrack a little bit, matriculants. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get the point of intersection between the lines AF and MN. I have the equation of the line AF. So what I'm trying to do is get the equation of the line MN. And then I'm going to solve them simultaneously. So if I've got the line MN, the gradient, I can now get the rest of the equation by substituting in. So the equation of the line um, MN is Y equal to negative X plus 2. And I'm looking where it intersects y equal to x. So I'm going to solve simultaneously. So I've got x equal to negative x plus 2, which gives me 2x equal to 2, and x equal to 1. And I know that y is equal to x, so not e as I wrote down initially, but let's call that, what did we call it? We called it p is the set of coordinates 1, 1. Whoa, this was a difficult question. But it was difficult not so much by what we had to do, but they didn't give me a sketch, so I drew in my sketch. Then I had to analyze using grade 11 that the distance or the line between M and N is perpendicular to that line of reflection. If, because it is perpendicular, it's going to go through that midpoint P. So there's a lot of thinking that went into this, which means if I wanted to get P, I needed to equate the two lines and solve simultaneously. Whoa, that was an awesome question, but it was a toughie. I want to encourage you to look through this again, familiarize yourself with what I did, and look at my thinking that went in behind this. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> I hope that you survived it. So have a beautiful rest of your day. In the next set of videos, we are going to go over to trigonometry. So keep with me, stay with me, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. So keep well. Cheers.